Hello, everybody. Glory to God. It's Wednesday, and we're excited, and we're smiling because of the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name that's above every name that's named in heaven, earth, and under the earth. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my brother in Christ, and he is... Uh, Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire. I like Esquire. <laughs> he's an Esquire. <laughs> I'm just a preacher, but he's an Esquire. <laughs> but he has written this book, Say My Name, the Third Commandment. Probably not what you think. And it probably wasn't, I guarantee you, because it, it, it turned into this magnificent revelation of God and his names, mm -hmm. and then the name of his son. Yes. Actually, Jesus is the Englishized name. Mm -hmm. The fifth book of the first covenant, the book of Joshua, that's been Englishized. Mm -hmm. It's Yahshua. It means Savior, mm -hmm. and that's his name, Yahshua. Yeshua, Yeshua, the Messiah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. That's the name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, see all God. See this green tab I got here. I want to go over to the Book of Genesis first. And then we're going to ask this renowned attorney what the power of attorney actually is and means. Now, in the 17th chapter of Genesis, in the 15th chapter, is all of these, the different things that he did. And, and he entered into the blood covenant in the blood of animals. Mm -hmm. When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am El Shaddai, yes. the God that's more than enough. I will make my covenant between me and thee. Now notice what he said. I will make yes. my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me. Now he had a choice. Yes. He had a choice. Behold, or look, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, mm -hmm. but thy name shall be called Abraham for I, for a father of many nations have I made thee, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Hallelujah. Now, entering into covenant with a man, and he comes on down here, you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Mm -hmm. The man had to shed blood. He changed his name. He entered into covenant with him. Mm -hmm. The H, Hashem, in Hebrew, the name. <laughs> Glory to God, he changed his name. Yes. And he was that for the rest of his days. Mm -hmm. He became known as Abraham, the friend of God. He was never called Abram again. Anymore. Never, never, never. And the blessing of Abraham is all the rest oh. of the way through this book. Yes. The name. Hallelujah. The power of that name. Mm -hmm. And everywhere he went and he said his name, Everybody that heard that Hebrew name, they didn't say too much about 
this old man because he could buy and sell everybody <laughs> in the place. And that's why he was rich. <laughs> he said it back when he was Abram. Went in that battle. And the blessing taught him how to train the members of his household and the servants of his household to fight at night. Mm. Nobody had ever heard of that before. They owned the night. Well, I came, um, you know, I'm a veteran of the United States Army. And that became the, not while I was in there, but later, particularly when night vision came out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the slogan of the army was two things. We do more for nine o'clock morning than most people do all day. Mm -hmm. And we own the night. So he said, you know, the king says, we're gonna take this. We're gonna, no, he said, I don't even want the string out of your shoe. Mm -mm. Never let it be said, any man made Abraham rich, Abram rich, but almighty God. Mm -hmm. He said, I have raised my hand to him. Glory. He was in covenant with him back there then, mm -hmm. but it was in the blood of animals. He was walking in a covenant then. He said, I've lifted my hand to him. Mm -hmm. Never let it be said, any man made Abram rich, but almighty God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. The name. The name. And it progressed and progressed until that moment came. And God said, I have made you. Mm -hmm. Father of many nations. Well, he had the authority to do that. He can make him whatever he wanted. Whatever he wanted to. But see, he already had the plan. He planned this all the time. Mm -hmm. He started out with Adam and his name is Red. And an animal shed blood to give him clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it began there. This is the blessing book. The first word any human ear heard was bless. And he dumped it. Glory to God. Mm. So the Lord had to get, he went to work to get it back. Wow. And all the first half of this book is a setup for Jesus. Uh, thank you. Amen. Amen. A man. It had to be a man mm -hmm. because it was a man with the original authority. It was a man that could have stopped it and didn't mm -hmm. because the, the Bible said she turned and gave to him to eat. He was there all the, all time. the time. He saw it. He, he, I'm of the opinion that the love in him for this woman and her uncanny beauty mm -hmm. I mean, God handmade her. Wow. Whew. Wow. And he, he just couldn't do it. He could have. He could have just reached over there to her and pushed her back mm -hmm. and said, you get out of this garden. In the name of Jesus. He had the opportunity to repent and he blamed it on God. Mm-hmm. Everything could have been changed right there. But here we are, all of these same thousands of years later, and we're still talking about it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's, that's the understanding of this book. It's called the Word of God because it is His Word, and it's blood-backed. Mm -hmm. And um, now, he changed his name in order that there be a, a blood connection between the two of them and the name 
represented it. Mm -hmm. And every time he said it, he said, I am the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Every time he said his name, yes. every time he said his name, mm -hmm. every time he said his name, every time he He's sowing that seed. Say my name. Mm -hmm. Every time he said his name, yes. he said it again. Mm -hmm. He said it again. He said it again. And I'm totally convinced when Isaac was born that <clears throat> he had said that so much. He said that so much. He said that so much. And God said, Sacrifice this boy to me. Mm -hmm. How can it be a father of many nations? And he said, the boy and I'll return. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Hebrews, he received him raised from the dead in a figure. Yeah. And he raised the knife. You know, Hollywood said, oh, no. Mm -hmm. He's going to get to see him raised up from ashes. Mm-hmm. But El Shaddai, the God that provides, Jehovah Nisi, mm -hmm. there was a ram stuck in the thicket. Mm. He provided. <laughs> and he opened up Abraham's eyes to see yes, he did. that he had already yes, made the did. provision. Yes, he did. Uh, after Abraham yes. walked in obedience. Yes, continue, please. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Every time I hear that account, it just does something on the inside. It does me too. Because what it tells us is that God is waiting for us to obey him so that he can open yes. up our eyes to see all of the yes. blessings yes. that he's already made yes. provision for. Yes. But we've got to walk in, in, in obedience yes. so that he can open up our eyes to see that it's already done. Yes. We're walking around blinded to things that God has already done for us, that's, yes. things that he's already made the way for. It is because of disobedience the, or reluctance. <clears throat> of course, Kenneth Hagin, <clears throat> Oral Roberts became my, <clears throat> my spiritual father. I spent a lot of time with him. Mm -hmm. But that put me in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, and then I met Kenneth E. Hagin. And oh, he, I began to learn faith from him. Mm -hmm. And we became very close also. Mm -hmm. And he, he is saying <clears throat> that this is the hardest part. Oh my gosh. The say part. Mm -hmm. And he based this, like he based so much, on the 11th chapter of Mark. Because that's the scripture that got him off of the bed of affliction. Yeah. <clears throat> and and he pointed this out. For 20th verse, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Mm -hmm. Jesus answering said unto him, he didn't talk about that fig tree. Mm -hmm. That fig tree was an example. And now remember, the first act of any man and woman to meet their own needs without God was to sow fig leaves together. Mm. Yeah. So a fig tree got killed over this thing. <laughs> 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 Glory to God. Now listen to what he said. Have faith in God or have the faith of God. Yes. For verily I, I say unto you that whosoever shall say Mm -hmm. unto this mountain, be thou reme removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe 
that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Hagin had just over in the, the uh, church sanctuary next to his home, mm -hmm. he, he just got over there and read the whole book of, of Mark. Yeah. And, and while he was just, just, just lying there on his back. And the Lord said to him, have you ever noticed that the word say in that verse is used three times in the word believe only once? Three to one. He said, you will have to teach and preach three times as much on the saying as you do the believing. He said, my people are not missing it in what they're believing, they're missing it in what they're saying. Same. Well, God said it, lie it be. Mm -hmm. Say is throughout the Bible. Yes. David said it mm -hmm. when he went after Goliath. I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Mm -hmm. So he put the angels to work right then. The name. The name. The name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the covenant name. Well, look what else he went on to say. Therefore I say. Mm -hmm. Therefore I say, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Mm -hmm. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. I say. Yes. And it's a very interesting study in the ministry of Jesus, mm -hmm. how he used his words to deliver and yes. to heal. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, <clears throat> unless the Lord has given you another direction, I really would like to get over into the power of attorney. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, wait, let, let me turn there. It's, it's, it's under the green tab. <laughs> amen, amen. Chapter three, say my name. Your power of attorney. Mm -hmm. The 15th chapter of the gospel of, according to St. John reads as follows. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now remember, when he said that, the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th chapters mm -hmm. of John's writings were all in the middle of the night in that last Passover meal that changed heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to the cross. Then in 1623, he said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. He will give it to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Faith in the name. In the name. Praise God. And in the power of attorney. Oh, do it. You want me to get there? Now, now remember, Melvin G. Barney Esquire. That means he is an attorney Extraordinaire. <laughs> and an attorney, remember what his testimony was? An attorney was what he wanted to be. Let me change that. An attorney is what God called him to be. And he wound up a legal preaching pastor in Sacramento, California. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's where I met him was in Sacramento. So when we talk about that uh, 15th chapter of John, again, it says where it says, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. That's it, isn't it? And I appointed you. So we see here that he has an agenda. Yeah. He says, I chose, you thought you chose me. You thought you came to me. You thought you gave your life to me. But I had an agenda for this. I chose you and I appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Yes. So God's agenda was that we bear fruit. And not only that, he says that your fruit should remain and in order to enable you to bear that fruit, whatever you ask the Father in my name, 
He'll give it to you because you are determined to bear fruit, yes. which is my agenda. I've assigned you to bear fruit. So what that is, that right there is the conveyance of a power of attorney. And when we define a power of attorney, a power of attorney is, it amounts to a legal authorization to act on someone else's behalf. And, and so you may, for example, I know a lot of people uh, have been given the power of attorney uh, to act on someone else's behalf. You may have been given power of attorney to act on your uh, parents' behalf to make medical decisions. Mm -hmm. You may have been uh, given power of attorney to do business, conduct business affairs mm -hmm. on, on behalf of someone. So, you know, power of attorney is just a legally backed authorization to act on someone else's behalf. And the important thing about a power of attorney is that it is legally binding, which means when you've been given that authority, uh, whoever it is that you're dealing with in that engagement of that business has to treat you as though you are the person who conveyed the power of attorney to you. Now, say it again. Now, I want this to come over particularly to our, to our, our Mm -hmm. radio and television audience because mm -hmm. this goes all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that could, that don't uh, literally understand uh, that the authority of a believer. Yeah, yeah. The authority that is invested in us and on us through the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the power of his name. Yes. That... Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto right. him as righteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, went to that cross, went to hell, was born out of hell itself. And now we have been made the righteousness of God in, in him yes. because we believe the mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. And the scripture you, you took us to earlier, because we believe on the name, not in the name, but we believe on the name. It's one thing to believe in the name. That's let's, belief let's, that. Let's go over there in 1 John. Over in 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 23. Yes, sir. <clears throat> let's go up to um, verse 20. If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God or have faith toward God. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Yes. This is his commandment. Hmm. All right, class. This is his commandment. Yes. That we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one Lord. another as he gave commandment. Mm -hmm. And I made a little note there in John 13, 34 and 35. Mm -hmm. And we're out of time. <laughs> Kim, I wish you quit doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, Glory everybody. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank oh, you. that is so good. What does the third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, really mean? There have been various interpretations in the church throughout history. What if most of us had the wrong impression of the meaning and are not honoring God's instruction to our fullest potential? Enter Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire with his book, Say My Name. This book breaks down the names of God listed in scripture and what each name means to you. He teaches how to use the power of attorney to use the names as a tool as God instructs and sow them as a seed to see goodness grow in your life. The kingdom principle of sowing and reaping applies even to the names of the Lord. When you open your mouth to speak His name, you use the power of God to manifest the promises that the name stands for, such as peace, healing, comfort, and guidance. Why? Because God put the power in the name to make itself come to pass. This is a kingdom principle. Learn what God has in store for you when you know how to say His name. You are authorized to carry the name of the Lord and have power of attorney to act on Jesus' behalf. Order your copy of Dr. Melvin Barney's book, Say My Name, available at the special price of $9.99 on kcm.org slash tv special. 
or when you call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. God loved you so much that He sent Jesus to save you. Jesus paid the price that sin demanded. He went to hell in your place. And then God raised him from the dead. He defeated sin and all the power of the enemy. Now, Jesus wants you to share in that victory that he won for you. You can have the victorious life that Jesus is offering you. All you have to do is receive him as your Lord and your Savior. I want you to pray this after me. Say this out loud as I say these words. Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I speak with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is my Lord. And fill me, Father, with your precious Holy Spirit. And I will speak in another tongue as the Spirit gives me utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you have just received the life-transforming power of God. And that power makes all things, everything, brand new. I want to welcome you to the family of God. The words that you spoke allowed God to transform your life. You have been born again. And we have a free resource called The Salvation Package to help you learn more about your new life in Christ. It's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And along with the book are brochures to help you get started reading and studying your Bible. Just contact us at kcm.org and we'll get it to you absolutely free. Also, while you're on kcm.org, we encourage you to check out all our online teaching resources. There are hours of archived teachings from broadcasts and meetings. They're all available on demand to help you grow spiritually. Now, I know you jumped up and you're running around the room, so you can sit back down for a moment. Oh, aren't these truths marvelous? Glory to God. And the, the insight and ideas and concepts that rise up in, inside the human born again spirit when we get into the Word. And, and these things are so real. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Melvin Barney, glory to God, and the whole class reminding you that God loves you and we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah.